Welcome back to the channel. I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video I'd like to show you how I'm staying ahead of the battery bug in my new cab, and how I've added a little extra convenience to my system. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. Now, with all that said, you may or may not be aware that a small number of Simpsons cabs have been hit with a low battery bug. When this bug hits your arcade 1UP Simpsons cab, your system will boot up fine and even let you play a game for a minute or so. However, when the timing is right and this bug hits, your system thinks it has a low battery and shuts down, in order to protect itself, and this seems to have happened to people who have, and have not modded their Simpsons arcade 1UP cabinet. In truth, I'm unsure if anyone really knows why this bug happens. The good news is that people are reporting that if this bug hits your cabinet, you can remedy the issue by taking the back of your cabinet off and plugging in a phone charger. This may be a simple fix, but it works, and if we try, we can expand on it. I, for one, don't wish to have the back of my arcade cabinet removed, nor do I want extra cabling running out of the back of my cabinet, just to fix a bug. I do, however, want to negate being the recipient of the low battery bug. Also, I'd like to turn this issue into an opportunity. An opportunity to not only add a charger to protect against this low battery bug, but I'd also like to add an externally powered USB hub so I can add a keyboard, mouse, or external USB drives. We can get more into those things later in the video. For now, I wish to speak about an easy power distribution system. To meet my needs, I'll be using a combination of two pieces of hardware. One is an inlet switch, and the other is a common power strip that I've hardwired to the inlet switch and mounted to the inside of the back panel. This gives us a very clean look on the outside, an interior and exterior power toggle, and multiple power ports for our external USB hub, and our PCB board. The inlet switch comes in four parts, the main housing, a fuse, a fuse mount, and a switch. We'll need to put this together, and I wish I could say that mine came with instructions. I can say it was easy to figure out, and it didn't take me much time at all. To mount this to the back panel, we will need mounting screws that didn't come with my hardware, and you'll need to supply those also. I'll do my best to build a list of needed parts and place them in the description, and if you choose to get your needed parts off of my list, then this channel will get a small commission, and you'll be helping this channel grow. Thank you. To mount the inlet switch, I did need to cut a hole in the back panel of my arcade. This wasn't very difficult to do, and I believe that the cut was only about 1 inch by 2 inches. I used the inlet switch as a guide, then drilled a small hole inside the excess area and cut the remaining material away with a jigsaw. Once it was cut away, the inlet switch fit with ease, and I was able to install mounting hardware to ensure that the switch would be in place without issue. The power strip that will actually be used in my power distribution system is the very next component that needs to be prepared. I want the power strip to be installed inside my cabinet because then I won't have any additional power cables protruding from the back of my unit, and any extra components can be plugged in, inside the cab. Granting me a spotless appearance from the outside. In order to make this a reality, I will start by unscrewing two of the screws that are on the power strip. We will be drilling out each screw hole so that we can run a bolt and nut through each hole, which will allow us to mount the power strip on the inside of our back panel. Each screw will need to be caddy corner to one another, and we will be drilling out each screw hole. I believe it goes without saying that when you modify a power strip, you must use caution. I also feel like this is a great time to reiterate that, I am simply showing you how I've modded my cab. If this is out of your wheelhouse, do not proceed. If you do have an understanding of AC electricity, then great, but still use caution. Also, make sure that when you drill, your holes are perpendicular, and give you a clean pass for your mounting hardware. But most importantly, if you mess this up, well, that's on you. Next, we'll take our newly modified power strip, and use it as a guide to space out a usable location on the inside of the back panel on our Simpsons Arcade 1UP cabinet, and we'll drill holes that match the mounting holes we just made in our power strip. Once done, run the bolt starting from the outside of the back panel, and fasten the power strip down with corresponding nuts on the inside of the panel. 
If this is done correctly, we should have our power strip mounted on the same side of the back panel as the internal components of the inlet switch. It's now time for me to cut the plug off the end of my power strip and hardwire the cabling into the internal connections on the inlet switch. To do this, I'll be using a number of spade connectors. All of the internal connections on the inlet switch are male terminals. To make reliable connections, I'll be using female spade compression connections. And again, I'll leave links for the parts I'm using in the description. Making these connections is very easy. And because of this mod, I can plug in a charger, keeping me safe from the low battery bug. And I can add items like USB hubs without having cabling run out the back. When done correctly, you should have a clean looking inlet switch on the back of your cab, and on the inside, you should have a hardwired and hard mounted power strip. All of the switches on both the power strip and the inlet switch should be in working order, and you're now ready to plug in your cab, your charger, your USB hub, or anything else you wish to add to your cab. I personally will be using a USB hub that has a built in charger, and I'll be mounting this hub with double sided thermal tape. I've used this thermal tape before on Pi builds to hold passive coolant mediums like copper, heat sinks. It's worked well for me in the past and I figured I'd give it a try on this build. Again, for me personally, because of the hardware I've chosen, I'm going to not only plug my mounted hub into my power strip, but I'm also going to plug it into my PCB. This will expand my usable ports, and provide power to anything plugged into the hub via the power strip. I'll also be using the hub's charging port, and I'll plug that cabling into the PCB's micro USB port. This, in theory, should keep the low battery bug at bay. While doing all of this, I started to think about how lazy I am, and how I don't much care for removing the back of my cab each time I need to make a change, or plug a keyboard and mouse into my unit. To help myself be lazy, and to make my life a little easier, I've decided to add this two-port external USB extender, and mount it on the small top front panel of my cab. I've got to admit this is a bit of an afterthought, but I'll go on record, and say this modification to the USB port has made my life easier. Because this is an afterthought, I'll need to remove my front control deck, and I'll even need to loosen the screws in my side panel. Doing so will enable me to remove the front top panel, and once I've got it removed, I can use a hole saw and drill, to make a hole in the center of the panel for the new USB ports. The hole will need to be 1 inch in diameter to accommodate the new USB port, and I'm just going to eyeball all this because I'm kind of feeling froggy. It should be fun. I'll now drill a hole in the center of this panel. Again, I'm going to eyeball this work, and I'm going to do so inside my home, as I'm unwed and do not live in fear of making a mess. Once the panel is cut, we'll be able to fit the USB extender. To do this, I'll run the cabling through the hole, and use the mounting nut that comes with the USB extender to attach the extender to the panel. This will give us a solid external point to connect to our unit via USB. We'll then reinstall the panel with its newly installed external USB port. This is done by placing the panel back in its original grooves or indentations and retightening the side screws. Please make sure that the USB ports are facing outward and the cabling is rooted into the cabinet. We will also need to tighten down the top control panel with its four screws. Remember not to over tighten, or you will damage your deck protector. I now have an external USB hub, and in theory, my PCB board thinks it's plugged into a charger, and anything like a USB drive, a keyboard, or mouse will now be powered 100% of the time by the USB hub. This should keep the low battery bug away, and the external USB ports will let me live my best life. I'd like to thank you for checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please consider liking this video, sharing it on your social media, leaving me a comment, and if you've not done so yet, please subscribe. These are all very easy clicks for you, but they mean the world to this little channel. Thank you.